You know, I I have a feeling I, I, I might actually end up liking the TV show more than this film. Uh, Fargo. That, now, that's a name I'm sure uh, a lot of people have heard. The title. Just the word Fargo. A lot of people have heard it. Uh, for some reason, every single time I think of... Or I've... I've thought of uh, Fargo, I always thought of Ben Affleck, because of Argo, I know, different movies, still, um, now that I've finally seen Fargo, yes, this was my first time watching, I can give you my thoughts on it, now, see, there are movies that, you know, you know, there's just those certain types of movies that just everybody loves, like The Godfather, The Shawshank Redemption, Star Wars, The Green Mile, all these other movies, right? Great movies. And then there's Fargo. Same thing there. Everybody loves it. But not me. Yeah, this is going to be one of those controversial movie opinions of mine. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, that's for... I didn't hate it, for the record. I did not hate it. No, and it's not a bad film. No, no, no. Well, first of all, I should, like, say what it's about. Uh, well, first of all, the very first of all, is... This is a film directed by the Coen brothers, who are very popular... A lot of people really like their movies. I'm not the biggest fan of their movies. To be fair, I have not seen a lot of Coen Brothers films either. But in this case... Um, well, I've seen... I've seen a No Country for Old Men. Right? I've seen that one. Same thing there. I didn't love it. But it was pretty tense. I didn't like the way that they, that they ended up c kind of concluding the film. Not just that, but the way they resolved the high, uh, the climax. So that's just kind of a, to give you a rough idea of where I stand on, on the Coen brothers. Well, to give myself a little bit of credit, I have also seen True Grit. I'm, I'm also not the biggest fan of that film. Also seen Suburbicon, uh, written by the Coen brothers, not directed by them, but uh, I don't like that film at all. So now watching this, of course, you know, Fargo, you've seen the poster a million times before. It's one of the most iconic uh, movie posters of all time, I would say. And... You know, there's just a certain level of expectation that you have. Um, but it's not like that if I had any less expectations that I would have liked it more. No, no, no. The way it is with me is there's excitement that I have for a film. And then when I start watching it, I leave those expectations out of the door. I don't, I don't consider them. I don't like, oh my gosh, this hype, this hype, it's got to live up to this hype. I never have that sort of thing, you know? It's just like, all right. I'm expecting it to be here, now let's judge it on its own without any uh, um, other notions that I might have had before um, yeah, watching it. So basically my excitement or whatever, my anticipation did not affect my final judgment of the film whatsoever. No, no, no. It's also because I wasn't too hyped either. Um, I was kind of like, hmm, let me watch this. This is going to be interesting, right? Um, there's kind of mul multiple reasons why I decided to watch this film. Because I actually want to watch the TV show, right? There are four seasons out, fifth season incoming, apparently this year. Uh, so I was thinking to myself, what if I just... I don't know, what if I just do the movie first, you know, you know, because it's like this. What if the TV show, what if, so many what ifs. Um, I, I'm, I'm guessing the TV show has a similar style, right, to the film. And I actually like the style of this film. So I was like, all right, 
I mean, watch the original cut first to see where they're gonna take that inspiration from uh, in the TV show. Um, I just thought that that would be a good idea. Now, what what I, what I find absolutely fascinating about this film is that it is actually a true story. You know, it's based on a true story, more specifically on events that took place in Minnesota, 1987. So that's nine years before this film came out. Now, one of the things that's really cool about Minnesota uh, is that is the setting, just in general. This film has a very beautiful setting, snowy streets, uh, beautiful scenery, beautiful soundtrack. I have to say that soundtrack is very nice. I can definitely see myself listening to that one later on on Spotify for sure. Um, there's, a, there's an interesting thing about the acting because it's a weird film. It really is. It's, it's described as a black comedy. It's a crime thriller that's also a black comedy. But I wouldn't describe it a black, as a black comedy because that term, uh, black comedy, usually I would think of something like Friday, you know? Uh, not, you know, I would call it dark humor instead. Yeah, the acting. The acting is just a bit bizarre. Well, first of all, you have Frances McDormand, who plays this really sweet, lovable, lovable policewoman who doesn't really know what's going on. She doesn't really know what's happening in her town. She might be a sheriff. I don't know. She, yeah, but the police. Uh, and but uh, but she's just this has this like innocent way about herself that that's just so sweet, charming. I, you just cannot help but absolutely really adore her. She's 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 wonderful, you know, and it's a wonderful character to play for sure. Uh, and it's, you, you just like seeing her on screen. Uh, the, 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 there's one thing that I wrote down, which is the acting sometimes is too subtle. I guess underacting we can call it. Not enough emotions shown. Uh, for instance, Wade, who is Jerry's, Jerry's um, I guess main character. Uh, Jerry's father-in-law. He is uh, way too calm, considering someone very close to him is abducted. I'm not gonna reveal who, because otherwise. I don't know, maybe you guys would see that as a spoiler for those of you who haven't seen the film yet. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like if... I'm not... See, this is where I mess myself over because I cannot say the relationship uh, between those two characters. But, uh, but basically, if I was in Wade's position, I would be much more concerned and much more panicking, sweating... Uh, crying, being angry, all all those kind of being frustrated, all those kinds of emotions I would experience. But the way it's just kind of like, oh, we gotta get this person back. Oh, you know, kind of what? Like, where are, the, where are the emotions? Like, especially because of the relationship between those two characters, like. I definitely expect you to really show your emotions, even if you usually don't do that. You know what I mean? So I thought that was awkward. Then I would have also said the same thing for Jerry. But then... Uh, there's a twist in the film. I like the twist. Because it made the film more interesting. And that's when I was like, oh, so that's why he's not been like, oh, no. You know, so I was like, like, really, this is your, a close person to you, right, as well. Like, this? Come on now. That's your reaction? Give me a break. But then I, I, I 
saw the twist and I was like, oh, now it makes sense. Uh, so I like the twist. Uh, and I like that that's also kind of an explanation for why he didn't, why he wasn't super like, oh no, right? Uh, so I like that part of it for sure. Uh, in my opinion, a, a man called Steve Park, I've never seen him at, well, I've seen The Gambler and apparently he, he's like credited within the film. I don't even know whether he was an actor in that film. I don't know, but I cannot remember ever seeing a man called Steve Park in the film. And on, on IMDb, he's also listed very down far below. But anyway, it's Steve Park as Mike, in my opinion, delivers the best performance in this film. And he basically, I actually only really has one scene, I think. And in that one scene, I thought he was like, he showed all the emotions needed. And I, I could really feel what he was feeling. Like, I, I, it's not like I was super emotionally invested, no. But I, I, I was like, this guy can act and I like this. I like the moment and I like the way he acts out that moment. So that's something that I really appreciated. Um, and finally, I got to say, considering this is a crime thriller, I never really felt the threat. You know what I mean? Like when you are watching a thriller, uh, you should be all tensed up and on the edge of your seat but that was just not totally not the case for me unfortunately you know like when i watch something like zodiac prisoners seven those are movies shatra island <laughs> those are movies where i'm literally oh my days even if i've seen them before I, I, i'm still like oh you know i'm still my eyes are still glued to the screen i still have to pay attention i want to pay attention all the time i want to understand every little piece of the uh, of every single information out there because i'm so engaged but with this film despite this being a crime thriller and despite there being a legit mystery i didn't really have that oomph that drive to really uh, be all super engaged in the film and that is I think very unfortunate which is why sadly I'm gonna only give Fargo a 6 out of 10 it's still a solid film I liked it I thought it did many things right but also some key things wrong or at least were missing for me personally now this is of course all opinionated if you like the Coen brothers other movies you're most likely also going to like this one. If you like crime thrillers, I think you're going to like this one. This one has a nice little bit of comedy to it as well. Uh, I, I had a good time. The pacing was good. The pacing of the film. Uh, it's just that I don't... In my opinion, when I t think about... When I think of the top crime thrillers out there, this one just isn't up there, in my opinion. I hope I didn't make you too angry with this review. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I trashed the film. I really didn't. No. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my explanation for why it only gets a 6 from me. So, uh, have you seen Fargo? Uh, if you have, well, let me know what you thought of it. You probably loved it. Uh, but... And if you haven't seen it yet, you plan on watching it, it's available for free right now on 2B TV. That's where you can watch it. 2B TV. Watch Fargo. Uh, I think you're going to have a pretty good time with that one. Alright, thanks for watching.